Bitcoin technology from the New York Stock Exchange happened, as well as three of the world's largest banks. And what that's done is it's created the best opportunity for traders for any market really in the last decade. We're going to show you why that is. Also going to talk about why Bitcoin is one of the easiest markets to trade for now, and that's what's so exciting about this presentation. It really is an easier, better market to trade. Also, three trading principles we've used to have over 88% accuracy in our Bitcoin trades. That's where Chris is going to jump in, and you're going to talk about all the exciting aspects of how we've been so successful trading Bitcoin. Finally, or actually not finally, second to last, why Bitcoin is nothing like a penny stock. It's a common misconception. People think Bitcoin is like a junk junky stock or whatnot. It's very much the opposite. Absolutely just as viable to trade as Apple, IBM, Microsoft, or any other blue chip stock. In fact, it's better because it's more predictable and you can be more accurate with your trades. And we'll also touch on some other common myths and misconceptions about Bitcoin. Why, and also why we love negative media coverage and why it's so good for us traders. All right. So with that, uh, Chris, why don't you jump on in and tell everyone who you are. All right. Um, thanks, Anthony. Yeah, so um, as Reed told you guys, my name is Chris Dunn. Um, I've actually been day trading stocks and futures since around 2001. And um, I actually started trading Bitcoin in 2013. I'll, I'll just tell you a quick story. I have a hedge fund buddy that at the time was managing just shy of a billion dollars. And so, you know, anytime this guy tells me something, I listen, right? I mean, um, he's a, a pretty influential young guy and he emailed me and was actually like, Chris, you got to check this out. You know, Bitcoin is blowing up. You know, it's had some explosions and some crashes in price. But even more importantly, I, I think this is going to change the world. And at first, I, whenever I heard of Bitcoin, I thought it was some kind of like pump and dump scam, like a penny stock or, you know, some of you guys might have heard about binary options or, you know, just one of these markets that just sounded kind of flaky. And uh, so I disregarded it at first, but the more I looked into it, the more I realized how powerful it really was. And, you know, so for me to take time and focus away from um, futures and stocks, uh, you know, I still day trade stocks and futures every day, um, but, you know, I, for me to put my focus on Bitcoin was pretty a, a pretty big deal for me. And I started trading in 2013, and then since then I've had actually 88% accuracy with all of my publicly posted trades, and I'll, I'll go into those uh, as many as we have time for. Um, and, and Give me one second here, guys. All right, and I'm also a world adventure junkie. Um, my wife and I, Nikki, who this is her in the, uh, the picture, we actually just got back from a year-long trip around the world, and uh, we're now back in Austin, Texas. So um, that's who I am. Uh, Anthony, I'll hand it over to you. Okay, terrific. Thanks, Chris. So who am I? I'm like most traders. I'm kind of embarrassed to admit it, but I do. I lost a lot of money when I began trading. Uh, I pretty much thought I could go at it on my own, could figure it out, thought I knew enough, and it didn't work out. And I'm sure a lot of us on this webinar feel, probably had similar experiences. Most traders don't start out just making money hand over fist. So. Um, about four years ago, I met Chris. We became really strong friends, really good friends, I should say, and uh, found a guy that could really help me take my training to the next level. And now what I do is I work with Chris to help him spread the message to other people like me because Chris is very, very focused on education and system development. If you haven't heard of Chris, that's because he doesn't run around doing a dog and pony show like a lot of traders do. He's focused on his work. So we partnered up together, and I kind of helped him get out there and spread the word. When Bitcoin came along, we both got so excited because we saw a real opportunity that we could really, really capitalize on because we realized that as a market, it, it, it provides so many opportunities that other markets don't. So we got really excited. We partnered up and we, we put something together pretty special that we'll get into as we progress through the webinar. We'll tell you more about that. And uh, also, World Adventure Travel Junkie, we spent my girlfriend and I six months traveling the world last year. And one of the greatest parts about being a trader, of course, is that you can work from anywhere, and Chris and I definitely take advantage of that. We probably we probably traded in in dozens and do, dozens and dozens of different countries combined, probably 50 plus countries that I had to guess. All right, so that's who I am. Um, moving on from that, uh, Chris, maybe you want to take this one and talk about what Bitcoin really is. Yeah, so I'm sure there's people on here that have heard a little about Bitcoin. Um, you know, we we've done a couple of webinars ever since we uh, Anthony and I started working together, and what we found is probably about 80 to 90 percent of people that we talk to kind of have heard what Bitcoin is. They know it's some kind of money, but they're not really sure exactly how it works. So we don't have a ton of time today, but I'm going to explain this and is is uh, the most simple and effective way that I can. So 
Bitcoin is basically a decentralized digital currency. What does that mean? Okay, decentralized means that it's not controlled by any one government. Um, what happens is it is a math-based currency, meaning it is a uh, pre-programmed. So the way that the money supply works, um, the way that the protocol works was decided at its inception in 2009. So unlike fiat currencies that can be you know, manipulated, right? In, in the US we have the Fed that controls the money supply and interest rates, right? And they try the best they can to help the economy. Um, and we've seen, you know, in recent history, we've seen successes, but mostly failures with whenever you have central banks that try to manipulate their own currency. And so the idea why Bitcoin was actually introduced was to solve a lot of the problems that we see with fiat currencies, aka currencies that are controlled and backed by nothing but the faith that people have in the government. And today, Bitcoin has a multi-billion dollar market cap because people trust it. They tend to trust math, and Bitcoin is actually an open source currency, meaning anybody in the, around the world can go in and actually audit how Bitcoin works. You can look at the code and, and decide for yourself if you trust it. Um, and it spins, it, it works just like kind of virtual cash or gold, meaning you can send money around the world to anybody almost instantaneously with no government red tape and basically for pennies. Um, and there was a, a story recently of somebody who sent $150 million to somebody else. Uh, it cost pennies, it was instant, and you know they didn't have to fill out any forms and go through a clearinghouse and wait days for the transaction to be completed. So um, it's, it's just a really great alternative that really has a lot of the, the too big to fail banks uh, scared um, because people are actually preferring this. You know, and there's countries around the world like you know, Zimbabwe and Argentina and China and a lot of countries that the people are just fed up with the currency controls and the inflation and they're actually choosing Bitcoin over their own currency and we're, we're starting to see a similar shift in the US. Um, so Anthony, I'll pass it back to you and you can just talk about some of the the big influencers that are actually backing this today. Thanks, Chris. Yeah, this is what's really exciting. So there's a lot of common myths and misconceptions. People think that because the price of Bitcoin has, is down from where it was and the mainstream media like to blast it, that Bitcoin's done. It couldn't be further from the truth. Just like when Apple stock crashed, we'll show you a slide on that in a minute. Did Apple go out of business? Did Apple go away because their stock was down 30, 40, 50, 80, 100 percent? No, of course not. So that's what people, that's what the, the, the ignorance um, and the, and the public perception of Bitcoin is so far off from the reality. So as far as major influencers backing Bitcoin through all the rise and falls of price, which is irrelevant to the technology and the platform of Bitcoin, of, of Bitcoin let's jump in and we'll show you some really strong uh, people you certainly would have heard of that are very pro-Bitcoin. So little guy, uh, little known guy named Richard Branson, multi-billionaire, says I've invested in Bitcoin because I believe in its potential, the capacity it has to transform Global payment is very exciting, and you can pay with Bitcoin to go to space on Virgin Galactic. They accept Bitcoin. Uh, Bill Gates, huge proponent of Bitcoin, technological tour de force. He's doing a lot of work in Africa with with uh, digital currencies to allow payments, uh, and because the banking system there is not nearly what it is here, so he's working hard over there using uh, both Bitcoin and digital currencies. So huge proponent, and Microsoft actually accepts Bitcoin. We'll show you more about that in a moment. A uh, little company called Google, the chairman of Google, Eric Schmidt, says Bitcoin is a remarkable achievement and has the ability to create something that's not dupl duplicable in the digital world and has enormous value. So you're getting the idea now. Uh, look past the, the talking heads and you'll see these huge, massive titans of business who are all 100% for Bitcoin because they understand it. They're not gobbled up in the BS hype on TV. Co-founder of PayPal, Peter Thiel, I think Bitcoin is the first digital currency that has the potential to do something like change the world. That's a really bold statement. and We believe that as well. So these are huge, huge people that are very much for it. So don't worry about the news next time they say something ridiculous about Bitcoin. In fact, we turn that negative news to our advantage. We'll talk about that in a few minutes as well. John McAfee, founder of um, McAfee, says of uh, the virus, antivirus software, says Bitcoin will be everywhere and, and the world will have to readjust world governments will have to readjust. So you're getting the idea now, these massive people, 
that are talking about Bitcoin in a really powerful way. And finally, the Winklevoss twins. We like to laugh at that name. You know them from the social, the, the social, the, the fa Facebook, the movie called what was it called, Chris? The social, social network. network. There we go. The social yeah. network. That's right. Uh, they were the original founders, according to them, and I guess a judge of Facebook because he gave them a bunch of money. And they say there's nothing predictable or transparent about the U.S. dollar. Bitcoin brings the promise of email to the finance sector, and now it's instant and effectively free to send money anywhere, as Chris just mentioned a moment ago. So the technology is incredibly powerful, and the Winklevoss twins are actually putting together an ETF for Bitcoin. Uh, we could go into more detail, but we're short on time today, so we'll keep moving forward. So you see on your screen here all these companies currently not just accepting but preferring Bitcoin. Microsoft, Dell, Expedia, Amazon, PayPal, eBay, Shop. many, many companies are literally signing up every day. So we're, we're trying to show you that Bitcoin is much more than um, the price of Bitcoin. It's a very powerful, very robust platform and technology. So myths and misconceptions about Bitcoin. Chris, maybe you take this one and jump into this. And yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, you know, if this is your first time hearing about Bitcoin or if all you really know about it is what you've heard in the news, the biggest myth and misconception, the first one that I actually thought for quite a while was Bitcoin is a bubble. Bitcoin's a fad. It's going away. It's pump and dump. You know, there were a lot of things that went through my mind in 2013 when I first started looking at this. And, um, and it quickly became apparent that Bitcoin and digital currencies, they're not going anywhere. In fact, they're only growing. And a lot of people just tend to focus on the price of Bitcoin and where it's been. And from that, they either say, well, it's going to the moon and it's going to be worth more than, you know, the, the market cap of Bitcoin is going to be worth more than the U.S. economy, or they say it's going to zero, right? So... I want to show you, and, and actually there have been many what I call price bubbles in the price of Bitcoin, but that has very little if nothing to do with the long-term viability. So let me show you what I'm talking about. This is back in 2011. So Bitcoin was actually introduced and created in 2009, and then it really started to gain some traction here in 2011. It, start, it was hovering about 50 cents, and then in a span of about two months, it got up to $32, and then over the span of about six months, it crashed back to $2. And I remember hearing something in 2011, and I looked at the chart, and like an ignorant person, I said, oh, man, this is just some kind of pump and dump scam, right? I, I didn't pay it any attention until 2013 when it happened again. So this was, I think, March or April of 2013 when Bitcoin, remember, it crashed all the way back to 2 bucks ramped back up to $35 and then hit an all-time high at 266 and then in a couple weeks was back down to $50. And at this point, it kind of piqued my interest. I'm like, okay, well, it's had two boom and bust cycles. There must be something to this. And so I started researching it, and I got the email from my hedge fund buddy. And uh, again, this guy's huge. He manages a ton of money. And so anything he says, I kind of look at. So I got really serious about it, and I started doing some research. And then later that year, in 2013, this happened. The price of Bitcoin went from $100 a coin to over $1,200 a coin. And this is what I call the China bubble of 2013 because this, well, part of the reason why Bitcoin went insane this year or during this three or four month time period was because the Chinese were like basically going nuts over Bitcoin because as some of you guys might know, China has some insane currency controls and you know they, they manipulate their currency and people are getting fed up. So the Chinese flooded into this. And then what happened is price crashed back, back dramatically. So a lot of people, and it was really funny because every time Bitcoin would have a meteoric rise, it was almost every article and news piece you saw was positive on Bitcoin. But when the price is crashing, it's like the media goes negative, right? And, and that's why I say people that follow CNBC and just make their trading and investing decisions based on what the talking heads are talking about, you're usually on the wrong side of the trader. Hence Kramer in 2007 telling everybody to buy those highs, right? And then everybody, everybody knows buy low, sell high, right? But nobody actually does it. Everybody typically does the exact opposite. Um, and 
as a professional trader, I mean, this is what I analyze every day. You know, I spend four to five hours a day trading stocks, futures, and now digital currencies. Um, but I want to show you the most important metric when it comes to uh, digital currencies, but specifically Bitcoin. And I'm going to jump ahead of these Apple stocks uh, charts real fast, and we'll come back to it. This is the absolute most important thing. It's daily Bitcoin transactions, okay? So this is going all the way back to 2009 when Bitcoin um, was first introduced. And you'll notice it didn't really gain traction until 2011, 2012 is really where it took off. And so what happened, this is going back all the way up until a couple days ago, um, we just hit an all-time high with daily Bitcoin transactions. This is people that are buying and selling products and services. This is people that are... Um, trading it, right? This is just transactions on a daily basis. And you can see, despite some missing data points here, over the past couple of years, this thing has been increasing. It's just been uptrending, and we recently just hit an all-time high. So instead of just judging your opinion about Bitcoin based on where its price is today or a year ago, this is where you want to put your focus, is how many people are using it and how many people are trading it. And like Anthony mentioned, the Winklevoss twins are actually developing an ETF, and I know of other exchanges that are creating futures contracts and options contracts around Bitcoin. So you can actually trade this. And um, just a couple of weeks ago, the New York Stock Exchange, along with three of the biggest investment banks in the world, invested over a hundred million bucks into the largest Bitcoin trading exchange. So now Wall Street is is getting on the bandwagon, and a lot of my professional trader friends that have been laughing this off the past couple of years are going, "Oh, wait a minute! You mean this isn't going away? You mean?" this is actually going to be a market that people are going to put significant volume into, uh-oh, we better get on this now, right? That's kind of what's happening in the institutional space. And of course, you, you can always go out and find somebody that doesn't like Bitcoin or whatever, but the fact is I've been making money trading it now for quite some time, and I just see a, a tremendous opportunity right now. So I'll just compare quickly, you know, Apple bubbles, right? So Apple just recently has hit an all-time high in its price, and as far as I know, the iPhone 6 just sold the most amount of iPhones out of any previous iPhone, where everybody, I think on iPhone 4, was saying their run was over, right? But it seems like every time they launch, they just gain bigger market share, and they sell more and more of these things. But here's back in the, the tech uh, boom and bust of 2000, you can see they had a 100% rise and crash. And then in the financial crisis of 2008, they also had a 100% trend uh, that crashed all the way back down, right? So just because uh, the point here is just to kind of reiterate, the price of a stock or a currency or an asset is really irrelevant. It's how many people trust it, how many people use it, and what, um, what, it actually, what use it actually has. And I'll tell you, in Austin, Texas, I'm part of an angel investing network that their sole focus is investing in early stage Bitcoin startups. In fact, I just got an email earlier today where there was four companies that they're, they're interviewing for investment. So it's like every week you hear of new big companies accepting Bitcoin, you hear of new investment firms looking to trade it, and new things coming down the pipeline. Um, so Anthony, do you have anything you want to add before we jump into the, uh, the trading portion of this? Just the, the most important thing to understand is uh, Bitcoin really is so much more than what people think it is. And the, the biggest misconception with Bitcoin is, is basically prolificated by the talking heads on CNBC and whatnot that just say how the price of Bitcoin is everything. And if, it, if, it, if it's down 80% from its high, that it's over. It couldn't be further from the truth. The price of Apple stock has nothing to do with the components and the products Apple puts out. If, if Apple crashes 20% one day, which it's done many times before, that doesn't mean the company is over and finished with. Just like Bitcoin, it's so important to understand the most important metric are the daily transactions. That's what we need to look at. That's growing day after day after day after day. And that combined with these absolute captains of industry that are all not only for Bitcoin, but, but accepting Bitcoin within their huge companies and investing in Bitcoin themselves, if that doesn't tell you something, I don't know what, what, what will. So don't listen to the mainstream media with the negativity about Bitcoin. Public opinion of Bitcoin is so far off from what it really is. 
The most important thing to understand is, can you make money trading it? And that's where this webinar is about to get very juicy. So I'll, I'll take it back to you, Chris, and talk about the differences and really the advantages of trading Bitcoin over other markets. Yep, thanks, man. So in a minute, guys, I'm going to go through and uh, show you some of my trades. I actually, I just posted this, uh, this blog post yesterday, go, actually recapping all of the trade alerts that I've sent out in the publicly posted trades. Um, just so you know, like this isn't hindsight trading. Um, I'm not, you know, just talking about theory here. I actually trade this, and you can see I've got nearly 60,000 views on just 40 of my uh, my trade ideas that I've posted on TradingView.com. I'm actually one of the top contributors on this site. Um, because of my accuracy with my Bitcoin calls. Now, I don't publish all of my stock and futures trades on here because those are much shorter term trades. I'm actually swing trading uh, Bitcoin um, for some pretty big size moves. So I'll, I'll show you just a couple of these. Um, you know, what I do is I, I typically go on here and I either make a public alert or I send it to my private uh, subscribers and basically show where I'm getting in, what my targets are, and all that good stuff. So just so you know, I just wanted to preface this with, look, I'm not some hindsight theorist. Like, I'm a real trader. This is what I do every day. Um, so with that said, let's jump into just comparing trading Bitcoin versus some other markets. And look, I'm, I'm not saying that you have to abandon what you're doing. I talk to a lot of people that they have done that. They're only trading Bitcoin now, but that's, you certainly don't have to do that. Um, but the, the biggest thing is that Bitcoin, there is no account minimum. Um, so to day trade stocks in the United States, you need a minimum of $25,000 in your account to meet the pattern day trader rule. With Bitcoin, even if the price of one Bitcoin is 200 bucks, it's divisible to the eighth decimal point. So you can literally trade with $5 or five cents if you want to. And commissions are not based on a flat fee, so you're not going to pay like a 9.99 ticket fee or anything like that. You know, it's percentage based. So I know a lot of people when they start off, maybe they'll start with a couple hundred bucks until they're confident in the in the market number one, and then in their ability to trade it, and then they'll actually fund like a real account. Um, but the beautiful thing is that anyone in the world can open a Bitcoin trading account in under 10 minutes. Um, this is beautiful because you don't have to go through an application process. You don't have to go through a broker. Um, you can actually trade directly through the exchange. So to contrast that with, say, like the Forex market, um, you know, a, a lot of Forex brokers are known for trading against their customers. Right? That will never happen in Bitcoin because you go right to the exchange. Um, so, you know, and, and I've I actually have students all over the world and. Um, I don't know of anybody that hasn't been able to open a trading account. So this is kind of the biggest point right here, guys. This is what makes Bitcoin very, very attractive right now. Now, I don't know if this will last a couple of years or five years or less, but right now there is significantly less trading competition compared to other traditional markets. And what I mean by that is you have, you know, like I, I day trade futures, for example. Guess who I'm going up against when I trade the ES or the S&P E-mini? I'm going up against the best traders in the world. I'm going up against hedge funds, I'm going up against high frequency algorithms, I'm going against you know, my friends on Wall Street. Um, and I'm going against you know, individual traders like you and me. But the, the competitiveness of that is significantly more than Bitcoin. You know, right now, it's kind of like Michael Jordan playing in his prime against a high school basketball team. That's really what this is like because you have what's called a lot of quote unquote dumb money or money that's just being thrown at the market and as a professional trader you can go in and do really well. Um, another huge benefit here is it's easier to short than stocks. So you know I trade equities every day as well as my wife. That's pretty much her full-time thing is to, to day trade equities and you know, sometimes it's frustrating because you, you're either under short sale restriction or you can't find shares to borrow, um, you know, those types of things. And with Bitcoin, that's not the case. It's kind of like futures where you can go short just as easy as going long. And the biggest thing right now that we've seen over the past two years is the fact that there's massive volatility, right? And whenever you have volatility in a market, that creates opportunity, um, you know, and, and 
Recently, we've seen volatility in oil. Um, some currencies have started moving after being dead for a few years. Um, but digital currencies have been, and I expect them to continue to be very volatile. Um, and you know, your mom and pop investor doesn't, you know, they get afraid when they hear volatility, right? But volatility is actually where the opportunity is, right? That's where the, the more movement and the more liquidity you have in a market, that's where the profit potential is. So I'm going to go through my three principles for finding the highest probability trades. And, and I'll start by saying this, guys. I don't overtrade Bitcoin. In fact, I swing trade it. I, I'm not day trading Bitcoin. The liquidity isn't there yet for day trading, in my opinion. But I'm going for big moves, anywhere from you know, 10 15% on up to 60 to 65%. And I've had a couple of predictions that have actually, one was 62% and one was 65%. Um, but I'm being patient, and so I want to just show you these three principles, and then we'll look at some charts. The large majority of traders in Bitcoin are highly emotional and undisciplined, aka dumb money, right? And I don't mean that as an insult. What that means, that's actually, believe it or not, a technical term that means when, when you have people just throwing money at a market, right? Like in real estate in the early 2000s, people were just throwing money at that market. In gold in 2009 and 10, people were just throwing money at that market. Well, in Bitcoin, that's still the case, and there's because of that, that creates a lot of panics and unsustainable uptrends, which creates massive profit potential for us. Now, that's where I find the big trades is around emotion, right? And because the best liquidity comes when moves are being driven by emotion, we stay away when there is no emotion. So during times of low volatility and low volume, I just don't trade. It's that simple. And this is why a lot of people that try to trade any market, but specifically currencies, whenever they uh, tr try to trade the chop, as we say, they get beaten to pieces. They get overrun by algorithms and professional traders that know how to pick off low volume scenarios. And then number three, some of the best risk to reward setups come when I'm able to anticipate breaks of key levels. And so what I do is I hunt for my proprietary setups where we can get in before a trend starts. That's really key, guys. A lot of people find themselves chasing a trend after it's too late. After you can see a trend line and a few, you know, a few waves in, in a trend's direction, it's too late. You have to anticipate. Chess is like being a chess or <laughs> trading is like being a chess player where you have to think two or three steps ahead of your opponent, right? Um, and if you're just using hindsight kind of technical analysis to trade, you will get run over. So I want to show you some charts just to put those ideas into practice. So three principles um, for finding the highest probability trades. This is principle one, going against the herd. And this was earlier this year where we had a big panic um, from, a, I think it was like 320 down into the 100s. I actually sent an alert where I was buying here at 188 and then scaled out some up in the 220s. So you know, in hindsight, this looks easy. You go, yeah, you buy the washout. But the reality is it's much harder to buy, number one, if you don't have confidence in a strategy with rules-based entry criteria, and number two, if you don't have a way to really understand the human psychology behind price action. This is an example of just not trading the chop. So you can see there's some fake out breakdowns and fake out breakouts. The, the point here, guys, is just don't trade when there's no volume and when, when you're just sloppy inside of a tight range. Um, and then this was actually a trade that, uh, that we took during a live class. Um, we just so happened to have a live webinar happening right here, and we had a news catalyst and a technical setup all at the same time. So this was just a, a beautiful, beautiful trade. Um, so like I mentioned, guys, you know, since I started trading Bitcoin, I've made a lot of public trade predictions and trade alerts, and I've posted all of these on Twitter and um, TradingView, and that's how I've gained such a, a following in this market. And you know, over the past 18 months, I've actually been about 88%. It's actually a little bit higher than that, but I like to count my um, my scratch trades or the break-even trades as losses, really. But um, just the ones that have exceeded my profit targets, uh, it's over 88%. And again, these are all publicly posted on TradingView, as well as I just did this blog yesterday um, where you can go back and kind of read the story of each trade. Um, this is on chrisdunn.com. And basically, I just I explain my thought process and what happened on every trade. And I'll just go through a couple of these just so you can see kind of my style and my approach. 
So this first chart right here, let me see if I can blow that up a little bit. So th this first chart right here was after the China bubble crash, where we went from over 1,000 down into the 600s. Um, I bought when everybody was telling me I was crazy. This is when the media first went really negative um, on Bitcoin, and I was buying the dip and had a 35% run, and then uh, quickly turned around for a short setup. Um, and let me show you... Um, once I started actually shorting Bitcoin, this, you know, what I like to do, guys, is I like to trade against the herd. I like to go against what's popular. And at this point, this is after Bitcoin rebound to retest a thousand. And when I was telling everybody, look, guys, there's way too many bag holders up here. I'm looking for a high probability short. And so we had, I mean, this is just a classic head and shoulders reversal pattern. Um, had a, about a 12% trade there. Um, I want to show you a losing trade because I, I don't want to just show you all winners. This was actually one of my two losers, um, which was a bounce trade. In early 2014, I thought that Bitcoin had the potential to bottom out here. And what ended up happening, I told people, I said, look, guys, if Bitcoin's going to bottom out at 500, it's a really key emotional level. This is where the trend's going to start. But I said, look, you know, there's a lot of bearish pressure right now. If we fail to break this trend line, it's going to fail, cut your losses quickly which we did. I think this was like a 7% move. Um, and then my, uh, my biggest trade to date, I'll show you that one. This was actually a 65% winner. Um, this was on the, after that kind of secondary crash, um, we had a move into the 500 level where I took a rebound trade for 65%. And then recently, we just had a 62% trade right here. Um, I sent an alert out at 188. This was the first trade of 2015. Added on this technical break and then closed out the, the final part of that position at 304. So just a beautiful, beautiful move. And again, you can see, I mean, this is over the course of a, a week or two. I'm not day trading Bitcoin. I just, I'm looking for those much, much bigger patterns. Um, so, you know, hopefully, guys, that gives you a little bit of an insight as to, you know, what Bitcoin is, how I trade it. Um, the principles that you need to, to make money trading it. And like I said, guys, I, I think there's a tremendous amount of opportunity um, in digital currencies. And if you're not involved, I think if you ignore this for much longer, you're going to regret it a couple years from now. So, um, Anthony, I'll go ahead and pass it back to you. And um, what we did, guys, just so you know, we put together a training program called the Bitcoin Wealth Alliance and the Bitcoin Trading Academy. Um, the Bitcoin Wealth Alliance is a group of traders and investors, um, and what we did is we created a curriculum with the goal of helping people really understand what Bitcoin is and the different ways that you can profit from it, specifically how to trade it, but there are about a dozen ways that you can make money in the Bitcoin community outside of trading it. Um, but yeah, Anthony, I'll go ahead and pass it to you, man, and you can kind of explain what we've got here. Okay, thanks, Chris. Yeah, we only have a few minutes left, so we're moving really quick today but the, the main thing before I jump into this I want to recap is that hopefully I know a lot of people have joined us really really late so with Bitcoin there's three main things you need to understand number one we're saying hey keep trading what you're already trading because the cool part about our program in Bitcoin is it's going to take you about 30 minutes to an hour a month of extra trading time and market analysis to be able to take some of the biggest monster trades that you could ever hope for really I mean the average trade that we're, ta we're seeing trades between 20 and 60 percent uh, returns basically when we're, when we're taking profits. So there are monster moves because we're swing trading Bitcoin. That's the first thing to understand. So very little time involved. The second thing is with Chris's track record of, of nearly 90 percent, that's because he obviously knows what he's doing. Uh, he's obviously a very skilled trader, but it's not just Chris. It's the market. Bitcoin as a market is significantly easier to trade than any other market. So that's the second major, major point. And the third point with Bitcoin is that it's just, it's, it's an easy, it's easy to, it's easy to learn. If you're already trading other markets, it's not going to be a hard transition. So it's really something you should be trading if you're not already to really add to what you're already doing. So with that, we put together the Bitcoin Wealth Alliance and we'll talk about what that is. We're doing something special here today. So moving on from there, what we're going to uh, give you in the Bitcoin Wealth Alliance today is two individual levels of on-demand video training so that you can get up to speed and you can be taking uh, Bitcoin trades just like we are. So we have what we call our Bitcoin Basics, and that will get you started from the very, very base level. 
So if you literally know nothing, as most people do right now with Bitcoin, we'll tell you where to open an account, how to get, how to get set up, uh, how to fund your account, uh, where to store your Bitcoin, the, the very, very basic stuff, the absolute beginner, beginner stuff. And very quickly, we'll move you through those, those, um, those modules and put you into our Bitcoin Trading Foundation, where you'll be able to understand the next level and really understand how to trade Bitcoin, how the market works, how it trades differently from the markets that you may be trading right now. And um, basically get a grip and get a, an understanding of, of Bitcoin, how the markets move, and how they work. So this on-demand video training is waiting for you right now in our members area. Uh, it's the real fascinating selection of videos. It's not boring and dry stuff because it's new, it's Bitcoin, it's exciting, it's cryptocurrency. So you'll get through these videos quite quickly and you'll find yourself wanting to watch the next videos. So when you get through these, these levels of videos, you'll now be able to understand how to trade Bitcoin, how to add to your trading arsenal. So moving on from that, um, regular pricing for the Bitcoin Wealth Alliance is $297, but today we're doing something very special. We're actually including two very special bonuses as well on top of the Bitcoin Wealth Alliance. So we have bonus number one, which are all coins. So the Bitcoin is not the only cryptocurrency out there. There are actually many other cryptocurrencies that you can also trade. And we're going to explain to you what they are and how to take, take advantage of that in our altcoins should you invest and we get into which alternative digital currencies are worth investing and which ones you should steer clear up. Because they, they, they all operate similarly yet differently to Bitcoin, the big daddy, if you will. There are certainly coins that, you, that provide opportunities and other coins that just really don't. So we get into that. So we're including that as a bonus. It's a $67 value. We're including that for free today. And our second bonus is accepting Bitcoin in your business. This is an interesting one. Maybe you or someone you know may want to add Bitcoin to their business. So many have. You've seen Microsoft, Dell, Expedia, on and on and on. So it's good enough for them. It's good enough for you or maybe someone you know. And we'll talk about how to add additional revenue streams from a hungry community ready to spend within Bitcoin. Because Bitcoin is really a community. There are hundreds of thousands of people out there that use Bitcoin every day. So if you accept that in your business or know someone who could, you can potentially increase revenues. So it's a cool little bonus we're throwing in as well. All right. So the Investor Inspiration special offer today is you're going to get the entire Bitcoin Wealth Alliance training. There's a $297 value for that. We're also going to throw in the bonus I just showed you, the altcoin bonus for $67 and accepting Bitcoin for your business for $47. And we're doing all this today for just one price, total value of $411. We're including everything today for $47. So I really urge you. At this price, it's, it's, it's almost a joke of a price because the amount of content and training we're giving you for this really, really low price today is so, so much worth your time of, of, and a small investment to learn about Bitcoin. Learn how it works. Learn how to trade it. Uh, get, in, get, get, get in now before it's too late because in a year or two, um, this thing is going to provide a tremendous opportunity for the traders like us who are already, already, already trading. As Chris showed you earlier, his track record is 88%, which means he's only lost a couple of times you know, over the past many, many, many months. So it's just an easier market to trade. It's a better market to trade. And it's a fascinating market platform and technology. You can do a coin account. If you aren't uh, involved in cryptocurrencies, digital currencies whatsoever, this is really a great opportunity to get involved for such a low price of $47. So Chris, why don't we throw that link up? I know our time is just about up here. So the special link today, you can see it on your screen, it's chrisdunn.com slash Bitcoin bonus. Again, chrisdunn.com slash Bitcoin bonus. And that will allow you access to our Bitcoin Wealth Alliance training. And it will also include the two bonuses you see on your screen. In fact, when you go to that page, the bonuses are actually right there for you. Oh, and one final thing, very important. We are offering a no questions asked 60 day money back guarantee. So if you don't like, if you don't love it for any reason at all, we will refund your money for the next 60 days. So there's absolutely no risk whatsoever. As soon as you sign up and log in, you're going to have that training waiting for you. And you'll be all set. You'll be, you'll be ready to go and learn about Bitcoin and whatnot. I will mention one final thing here because I know our time is up. When you do go and sign up, um, you're, we have some other special offers for you as well. So after you sign up and you get involved, there's a couple other exciting uh, bonuses for you. If, should, you like, should you take advantage or should you be interested, we have uh, some other levels for you as well. So go ahead and grab 
everything you see here for $47. It's, it's a tremendous value that we're doing today for the Investor Inspiration Webinar. And when you do, they'll, be, you'll, they'll see a video by Chris who will talk about some other stuff as well and that, that uh, you may be interested too. But everything you see here, which is everything you need to get started is just $47 and it will really get you up to speed on Bitcoin. So that's it. Thank you so much everyone for your time. ChrisDunn.com slash Bitcoin bonus. Unfortunately, I don't think we have time to take questions because the next presenter is probably ready to go since we're 1 p.m. Eastern right now. Chris, I guess I'll kick it back to you for any final closing notes. Yeah, thanks, Anthony. Uh, thanks, Reed, for having us. Um, yeah, like I said in the beginning of this, guys, my goal is just to, to really spread the word about Bitcoin and help you guys understand the, the big opportunity. And hopefully, the next time you hear you know something on the news or hear something at the water cooler about you know Bitcoin, either good or bad, you'll you'll be more informed than anybody else that you're you're talking to. And you know, like I said, I mean, I've made the the realization that Bitcoin is not a fad. It's not going away. If anything, you know, with the hundred million dollar investment in the Bitcoin exchange and with the derivatives that are being created right now. I can tell you Wall Street insiders are looking at Bitcoin very, very seriously. They realize it's not going away. It's not like some penny stock market or binary options market. Um, there's there's going to be futures and options that are going to have significant liquidity. Um, you know, the U.S. is not pushing this away. You know, the government is only embracing it, and they're now regulating and insuring exchanges. Um, so where the, the first few years of Bitcoin were kind of the wild, wild west, um, I think the next five years are going to be very, very exciting. So I look forward to, to seeing you guys in that. Um, thanks, for, uh, thanks for being here today. I had a great time presenting for you guys, and I look forward to talking to you soon.